Now that you've gotten your hands on the new X-H2S, let's talk about setting it up. So for many of you all, this is your first time using a Fujifilm camera or you're familiar with Fujifilm and it's your first time using an X-H series. Since I'm a wedding photographer, we're mainly gonna go over the photo settings, but I will go over the video settings as well just a bit, but keep in mind, I am not what you would consider a filmmaker. All my video experience comes from just doing YouTube stuff, so I can get around in video, but I am not a filmmaker by any means. With that said, let's go ahead and look at the way that I like to set up my X-H2S for weddings. Also, a big thank you to this video sponsor, Squarespace. We'll be talking about them later on in the video. So let's start out in our photo settings. Keep in mind what you have your PSAM dial on the left set to is which options your camera will immediately go into. My camera is currently on, and I have my PSAM set to manual for photo. I'm gonna click the menu OK button, and that'll put me right into my menu. We're starting off here with image quality, which is pretty straightforward. If you're shooting weddings, you're probably going to be shooting in RAW, but you have all of your other options here, normal and fine in RAW. These are going to be your JPEG and RAW, and then normal and fine are just for JPEGs. I have my RAW recording. Right now you see I have lossless compressed, but I can do uncompressed and compressed as well. I generally shoot all my weddings in lossless compressed, and I find that to be okay. But if you want the full, full 100,000% quality, you can go ahead and choose uncompressed. Down further, we have our image film simulation stuff. This is how you're gonna set how your film simulation looks. Right now you see I'm using classic Chrome, which is my absolute favorite. I have my grain effect off, chrome effect off, color effect off, and white balance set to auto. Now, keep in mind, I would change these settings if I was trying to shoot in JPEG and get a specific look. Sometimes I'll shoot my camera to make it look like film, and if I was doing that, my settings would be a little bit different. We have our dynamic range, which I usually just set to 100, but let's switch it to auto. And then our tone curve, which I have set to minus one in the highlights and minus two in the shadows. Sharpness I also have on plus two. And the rest of these settings, I kind of just leave them where they are. Just keep in mind your IQ settings are for your image quality. Below that, we have our autofocus and manual focus settings. So we have our focus area, which you can change this while you're shooting. So I normally never mess with this. We have our focus mode. You can also set this to a button, which I'll be talking about later. As you see, I like to use single point autofocus, but if you want to do continuous, it is there as well. We have our autofocus mode, so you can do point, zone, wide tracking, or all. And again, this is something that you can set to a button so you can change it on the fly. As a wedding photographer, that's super important. I have my autofocus continuous settings. You see here, there's a bunch of different settings, so you really need to pick which one works for you and what you're shooting. I generally keep mine on three for weddings, but I would suggest to test out each of them and see which one works best for you. I usually don't store autofocus mode by orientation. I like to have my autofocus point display on because I want to see where my autofocus is. And then your number of autofocus points generally will be set to 117 out of the box, but I usually change that to 425. Pre-autofocus off. And then we have a bunch of settings here, which I will generally keep on the standard settings. Again, something like face detection, you can change by adding it onto a button so you can turn it on and off when it's needed. You have this new subject detect setting. This is for the animal face detection. And most of the rest of this is good to go. Now we're in our shooting settings. This is gonna deal with our shutter and the electronic shutter, self-timer, and continuous interval shooting. 
Again, these are all special settings that you'll need for specific things. So I'm not gonna go over all of them. But again, if you wanted to do a self timer, it's in here. You can do 10 seconds or two seconds. And also if you wanna do interval shooting, you have that all here and you just set it up how you'd like it to go. You see, we also have our photometry and shutter type, which again, you can set to buttons to change. Flicker reduction, I have to off, but you can change that if you want to. And here's our image stabilization, which I have set to shooting only, but you can have it on continuous as well. Now, what I found is since I was able to get through a whole wedding with only two batteries, having this set to shooting only probably helped that. If I had the image stabilization set to continuous, it probably would have ate through my batteries a lot quicker. So that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about your battery and how much you want to save your battery. If you're doing event or wedding photography, that is a very important thing to think about. If you are curious about the new fan that comes with the X-H2S or the X-H2, your settings for that will be here as well. After that, we have our flash settings. Usually I do not mess with this area, but keep in mind if your flash is not working correctly, you'll need to come in here and make sure you have it set to shoot in manual or TTL. Usually I'm shooting my flash in manual only, and I don't think I had to change anything in here when I was setting up my XH2S. Now we do have an option here for movie settings, but keep in mind that if I switched my PSAM to the movie settings, I'll have a whole new set of settings for the movies. Now, the one cool thing about the XH2S is that we have this nice new record button. And because of that, I can set up settings here as well have them set to my record button so that I can record while I'm also taking photos. This is great for hybrid shooting, and honestly, it has me very much considering this camera to start doing more hybrid shooting, if anything, for even just engagement sessions. The last and most important section we're gonna take a look at is gonna be our setup section. This is where most of our user settings are. So under user settings, this is where you can format your SD cards, set your date and time, and take a look at your My Menu settings. You also have information about your battery age, so on and so forth. For your sound settings, please turn off the autofocus sound, especially if you're a wedding photographer. No one wants to hear that every time you focus on something. Generally, I'll come in here and turn off my autofocus beep. I'll turn off the electronic shutter sound, which is kind of weird sometimes because it'll take the photos, but you'll hear absolutely nothing. But basically, any sounds that are going to be too much or too loud at a wedding, I turn all of that off. Here are our screen settings. Now, the screen settings are something that I tend to change during a wedding day. That's usually dealing with the exposure and white balance. We have our view mode here. You can also change that on the button on the side top. We have our EVF and LCD brightness. You can set if you want your image to display after taking the photo. I usually do 0.5 seconds. It's just nice to see the photo real quick. Here's our preview, and this is what I was talking about. Exposure white balance is usually how you want it set. That means you see what you get. However, if you're shooting a wedding and you get to the end of the wedding day and you're starting to use flash, at that point, you won't be able to see out of the viewfinder anymore. So you'll want to change this to off. That way you can see everything through the viewfinder and then the photos will just come out. But during the day when I have daylight, we're on preview, exposure, and white balance. F-Log Assist on is awesome if you're shooting video. And I generally suggest to turn on your electronic level to 2D and the framing guideline. Again, if you've watched any of my full wedding day videos or my live streams, you'll know that I absolutely hate a Dutch tilt. 
unless you're really intentional about it. So because of that, I like all my photos straight and having the electronic level and the framing guide really helps with my composition and also keeping my photos straight. We have our scale units, and we also have all of our other display settings here. You can turn on what you would like to show on the screen. So this is all kind of personal taste, but I like the framing guide on and the focus frame. I usually turn off the histogram. And other than that, it's very straightforward. I would say to go through here and just see what you want on and set it that way. You don't want too much on your screen, but most of the default settings are actually really awesome. Now we're in our button dial settings. This is the place where I make the most changes. Starting out, we go to our function settings. This is gonna help us change all of our buttons. And you'll see there's gonna be a little picture showing you which buttons do what, and you can change them to honestly anything. Now keep in mind, you can change your buttons to basically do anything. I tried my best not to change the buttons that were standard, so you'll see currently we have record, ISO, white balance, and then the button in the back will be our face detect. There's a button on the front here, which I changed to TTL lock. Now the reason I do that is when I'm shooting off camera flash, when you TTL lock, it'll let your camera shoot the manual flash much easier and not try to think about it like it's TTL. This is something I do at every wedding, so I need it quickly and easily accessible. We have our focus type on the bottom left button here. That's how I'm gonna change between single point focus or continuous autofocus. The D-pad I didn't change too much, but I did change the left to be autofocus mode, so between single point or zone. Again, as a wedding photographer, this is something I need quickly accessible. We also have our shutter type, performance, and then after that, I generally turn my touchscreen off. I don't know about you all, but my nose tends to hit the screen when I'm shooting, and I'd rather that not happen, so I usually turn that off, so these menus don't mean much to me. Then we have our autofocus on and cue. All of that stays the same. And those are my button settings that are most preferred. Keep in mind also you can change your lever or your joystick as I call it. Right now I have mine push to edit and tilt to move the actual square, but you can also change it to zoom or reset to center. One thing I don't like, which the X-T3 and 4 do, is if you press it, it'll center it and let you edit the focus. But it looks like now, at the time of this recording, when you choose edit to focus area, it won't center it at the same time when you push it. So it's very interesting that that's a little different. We also have the options for our command dial settings here. This is another thing that is a little different in how it works. I'm not able to do ISO in shutter speed like on the X-T3 and 4. I can only do f-stop and shutter speed. So basically when I'm in manual, I really can only use the back dial here for shutter, and then I have to press the ISO button to change ISO. As a wedding photographer, that is kind of an issue because I can't change it as much. Having to press the ISO button as well makes it an extra step. Now, the two most important settings I say to always set is shoot without a lens, you wanna turn that to on. So if you're adapting a lens to your camera from like a different camera company, it will always see it as not having a camera on. So when you turn this on, you'll still be able to take photos. And then shoot without a card, always turn this off. My absolute worst fear is going to a wedding, shooting the whole wedding, and then realizing there were no SD cards inside of your camera. However, if you turn on the shoot without card off, the camera will say, hey, I don't have any SD cards. And you really want that. So please, please, please turn this off. Now that we've gone over all of our photo settings, let's take a quick moment to shout out this video sponsor, Squarespace. 
If you're a working professional like myself, you need a website. And Squarespace is the easiest way to do that. Squarespace is an online platform that will help you build your website quickly and easily. They have amazing templates that will fit your brand and make your photos and video look absolutely amazing. Save yourself so much time with designing by choosing a template, putting in your photos or video, and filling in some text, and pretty much making your brand look absolutely beautiful. On top of their amazing templates, you also have analytics, commerce, member pages, and amazing customer service. I've been using them now for eight, almost nine years, and I highly recommend Squarespace. It is the only way to easily build a website. And honestly, again, if you're running a business and you don't have a website, you're making a huge mistake. Make sure to check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. And let's go ahead and take a look at these video settings. So keep in mind to get the full look at your video settings, you need to switch from whatever photo mode over to a video mode. Now that I'm in video, when I hit menu OK, my settings will be specifically for movies. Now again, I am not a filmmaker, so we're gonna go over this very quickly. But we have our settings here, and this is also where you can get it to shoot in RAW if you're using something like the Atomos Ninja V. I have my shooting mode. I usually just do it in manual. If you want to do slow motion, it'll be under high speed record. Now what you do here is you pick what you want. So you see I can do 4K, 16 by 9, 120. And then I pick the frame rate. So it's going to slow it down in the camera and record it as a 5994 clip. So when I bring it in to Final Cut, then I can slow it down further. And that's where we get the 120. You can also change what's coming out on your HDMI as well. We can choose where I'm going to be recording, which normally you want to go to slot one because that's your CF card. We have our HDMI output settings. Output info display on will show the actual EVF. So if you want to be able to record what your camera actually sees, you would turn this on. We have our F-Log recording settings. So I can choose F-Log 2 on both the SD card and HDMI. We have our data level setting here. And also our image stabilization as well. Again, keep in mind that the IS boost mode is very aggressive and a lot of times makes the video look a little bit too digital. So I'm usually just using the normal IBIS and hand holding or putting it on a gimbal. We have our ISO settings and our Zebra settings. And you can set your tally light, which I normally turn that on, which you see I don't have it on now, but I usually do front and rear, just because a lot of the times for YouTube, I'm recording myself, so I wanna make sure I know that it's actually recording. Our image quality settings are gonna look about the same as it did for photo. So we have our film simulation, white balance, dynamic range. You have your tone curve, sharpness, noise reduction, all of that is basically the same. Same with our focus settings. We can choose which mode. We can choose if it's multi or area focus. We have our AFC settings, which for this is a little different, but normally you can see I like it to be locked on. I'll usually put it closer to four. And autofocus speed, I'll turn that down just a little bit so we get a smooth transition for the autofocus. We have our face detection on, subject detection, just like we saw in photos, and your manual focus assist. So normally what I like to do for this would be red high peak. That's the same for photo as well for me. 
and then all of our audio settings. And then the gear option is gonna be the same as it was for photo. So all of these other options are separate from photo except for the gear. Now, one thing to keep in mind is whatever you set your settings to here for your photos, you can see my settings on the bottom there. I'm at 120 for the shutter, 2500 for the ISO. If I go back to photo and then hit record, it's gonna start with those settings. So go into video first, set it up how you want it, and then you can go back to photo and hit record. Now that you have your X-H2S all set up, it's time to go out there and start shooting. Make sure to check out this playlist here, which has more information about wedding photography and will help you become a wedding professional.